Michael, great. Thank you so much, James, for talking about how you got into our field. It's really exciting to see people coming into the field. It's kind of scary when I see you getting a bachelor's degree in 2017. It makes me feel old. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to take the, my opportunity today uh, to propose a vision of our community using data for the long term to do our work better, to, make, to improve our research discoveries, so on really how we can make our data count with a little bit of a tagline of how DesignSafe can help, which is, of course, a cyber infrastructure project that we're developing um, through the NERI program. So if we think about the data life cycle of what we do on a daily basis, we usually start with some generation or collection of data. It could be experimental, field data, numerical simulation data. We then take that data and we analyze it. Today it might be Python, it used to be more MATLAB, you, you might be using Excel, um, but you're analyzing that data to ultimately develop a solution, do some research, and you ultimately publish a report or a paper in the ASCE Geotechnical Journal. But a few years later, you want to build on that, and you go look for that data, and you can't find it. It's missing or you open up the file, you can't make sense of it, and you have to ask yourself, could the work you did a few years ago be reproduced today? Could you, now that you maybe have collected some additional data, integrate it with that old data to make some new research discoveries? And this is a real problem. I know it's happened to me across my career when a new student comes in and they have to email the student who's now back in Greece and uh, what did that file mean, et cetera? Um, and just to hammer that home, uh, my colleague uh, Fred Hahn, from, who's a, a wind engineer uh, from Calvin University, created this video. And I want to see how many people can identify uh, with what happened to Fred. Dear Vassant, I hope the new job is going well. I have good news. The reviews for our paper are back, and we just have to update figures 6, 8, and 10 with the latest data. Can you do that within the next week or two? Well, Peter Lee has those data sets. I don't know what those data are. Can we ask Peter then? Do you have his contact info? He's in China. I know, but do you have contact info? No. Do you know where the data might be, or where he left his lab notebook with all the metadata? The meta what? Metadata. The labels for all the columns of data, the units for all the data, that kind of thing. Oh, well, maybe the wind tunnel computer? Maybe the portable hard drives? Maybe How the white box in the like grad that? student <laughs> office closet? Maybe the Google Drive project folder? So we've probably all been in that same place. And we have to think about how we can get beyond that so that we can make better use of that data in the long term. So what does that mean that we need to do? Well, we need to curate our data. Now, of course, curate is a, can be a scary word. We think of curation. We think of art exhibits, et cetera. And you say, what does it mean to curate our data? Well, first of all, it just simply means organize it. Okay? And, and just from a very practical perspective, you know, why don't, you, why don't we have meaningful folder and file names, not 75 underscore data set. Label the sensor names. Put units on your data. That shouldn't be too hard to do. Doc but document how the data was analyzed, the relationships in the data, the process that you took from going from A to B, the workflow that you took. And that means it could be as simple as just including a readme file that explains your naming conventions, your workflows, et cetera. Ultimately, all of these things are going to at answer one question. How will someone understand and reuse that data without having to call me or email me? Because ultimately, that's just more work if, if people are calling us all the time to, use our to figure out how to use our data. So it's part of the, the role of DesignSafe, which is the cyber infrastructure component for NERI, which is the Nat uh, Natural Hazards Engineering Research Infrastructure. Um, this afternoon, we have a, a big data session that um, Scott Anderson has 
has organized, and I'll talk more in detail about all the things that Design Safe has, but I'm gonna just focus here on the data repository and how we're trying to develop tools to help you curate, publish your data, et cetera. I, do, I don't wanna emphasize Design Safe is not the only option out there. There's an Odoo, you can do things in GitHub, but this is just one uh, opportunity uh, to, to use our interface. So if you look at the data sets, we've got our data repository, the data depot, and we have a whole area of published data sets. So just like you publish a paper, you can publish a data set. Um, and here's an example of a data set published by my good colleague, Scott Brandenburg. You can see there is some um, you know, descriptions. It's like it has an abstract similar to, uh, similar to a paper. Uh, when you look and scroll down into the experiments, section, we've got these different categories, we've got to make, we've make sure the sensor information is there, uh, there are information about the model configuration, also you could reuse that data going forward. So trying to clearly outline and organize the data for someone else to use it. How do we get to that point? And one thing that I want to emphasize when we think about data, there, there's kind of this dichotomy, you know, you could have completely unstructured data, which is minimal work on our side to have to, to publish it. Uh, but then it's really hard for people to use. At the other end is heavily structured data, very strong rules. You must have this, you fill this out, 72 fields and you're ready to go. But that's a lot of work. So in Design Safe, we've tried to fill the radical middle, as a colleague of mine likes to say, where we're gonna provide you some structure, but with some flexibility. And so we have different data models that di deal with different types of research. So you can see we have different data models if you have experimental data, if you've got data from a simulation, from a hybrid simulation, if you're doing some field research, which obviously many of us do. And then we even have the project type other, which is basically, if you don't fit into the other four box, just click other. Um, but all of these have a specified minimum set of metadata so that you can't just put it completely unstructured. So there's some structure so that someone else could take advantage of that data. But whenever I talk about our idea of flexible data models, I always say with flexibility comes responsibility. Because as a researcher or as an engineer trying to publish your data, you are responsible for organizing it. No one knows your data better than you. I don't know how you collected your data and what an analyses you did on it, or you did to it. So this is where the responsibility lies with the, with the researcher. So in a broad perspective, to make your data count, our data count, and what I mean by count is make your research reproducible so someone else could do something similar, uh, make it reusable, which really expands what can be done with data. There's a couple of main points that I want to emphasize here. For, first, this concept of formally publishing data sets. Not just putting them on a website, but formally publishing them in a data repository. And I would encourage you not only to publish the data itself, but the processing script that took you from data to results. Because then it can be built, on, that can be built on top of. Um, also, sometimes visualizations. Columns of numbers are not very useful, so the visual, publishing the visualizations can also be useful. Second, now that you've formally published it, you need a permanent digital location, which means a digital object identifier, right? Now our papers have DOIs, um, our data need DOIs, not just a URL. URLs, links break, DOIs are permanent. Even if the data moves to a different website, the DOI stays the same and will point to the new location. Uh, and I like to encourage everyone to list data publications in your CV in the same way you would list papers in your CV, because it is a valuable contribution to publish data for the broader community. And then finally, when you use data in a paper, whether it's your data or someone else's data, Cite that data publication, not in the acknowledgments, not in the text, in the reference list. So we can track data citations in the same way that we can track paper citations. So um, 
Here's just an example from a paper we published, and we had some uh, data and tools that we had published in DesignSafe, so it looks in the text just like it would a paper citation, but in the reference list, there's the citation with the DOI uh, hyperlink, takes you right to the data depot and the requisite information. Within DesignSafe, we try and help you do that. You can see here, going back to Scott's project, you see that blue citation bus button. It provides you exactly the citation. So you can copy and paste, you can download it, um, put it in bib text, whatnot, but now you know exactly how to cite your data in the reference list. So with that background, I wanna point a direction where we might be, maybe in just a few years, where first we go from this kind of life cycle that is somewhat ends after we publish our report or our paper, where now we not only publish that paper or report, but we also publish the data. And then ultimately, maybe many people are doing that same thing. And if we're all publishing that data, then someone or one of those folks or the group of folks can come and take those data sets, integrate them together to do an, a, a meta-analysis of that data, and ultimately publish another research paper or report and publish that data. And I would say within this paradigm of people publishing data, reusing data, integrating data, we can really see a web of data that's integrated, that's really enabling better research discoveries and geotechnical, simply geotechnical work far into the future. So thank you very much. <laughs>